Hello Pathfinders, you wonderful, wonderful people. I hope you're feeling okay after 11 weeks now of lockdown. I hope you're making the most of some of the uh, eased uh, rules and things like that and regulations. I hope you're able to see some of your loved ones that you haven't been able to see for a while, even if yeah. it's still from a distance. I hope you're able to um, keep getting on with people in your, in your household. Um, and I, I really hope you're enjoying some of the stuff some of the quality stuff that Kat's putting on yeah. um, the online, on social media, and on Zoom for you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know we're really enjoying it, and we really appreciate being part of St John's at this time. And there's so many things going on um, to stop people feeling lonely, so many things to help people be included and things like that. One thing that we're missing is that kind of response from you, that kind of contact with, with you and being able to have chats um, being able to hear your side of the story, being able to hear your views. Um, so please do comment in the, um, in the WhatsApp group. Possibly most importantly now though, is that you go get some juice, maybe some tea, maybe some hot chocolate, maybe yeah. some toast. Biscuits, crisps, whatever, but look. She keeps saying these crisps, they're healthy eating. Apple, get an apple oh, and some broccoli. Biscuits and crisps. Uh, but most importantly, <laughs> you need a pencil, some paper, or well, it could be a pen, not, and uh, a Bible. Right, we've got a game for you to start off with this week. Um, hopefully you've heard of anagrams. Uh, we're going to play a little anagram game. We've got five different words for you, and each of the letters in those words make up a whole new word. Um, so it might be one or two words, one or two words, and use the, take those letters. We'll try and put the, uh, the words on the screen for you as well to make it easier. Um, but then rearrange the letters and uh, come up with a whole new word. So here we go, number one. Number one. Number one is my Nora. What word mixed up could that be? Mm. Oh. The next one, amethyst pick. Like when you take a photo of the mineral amethyst. See what you did there? Geology. Amethyst what word could that be? Number three. Number three. Anita composes. What does she compose? Things. Music. Music. Tunes. Dances. You can compose a dance. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> number four. We've got a little bit mad. <laughs> Anita composes is number three. Number four. Bins. Legs. Bins. What you put your rubbish in. Your rubbish in. Legs. What you walk on. Number five. Fun griefs. There's a bit of a clue in that. Fun griefs. Bit of a clue what it might be in there. Yeah. There you go. So there's okay. our fantastic engaging game. So, Hopefully you are ready. Sorry. Hopefully you are ready to uh, share some of those with your family. Maybe if you've found a particularly intelligent family member, they've helped you with those anagrams. And you are... Buzzing and ready to go. Are we doing the answers now or at the end? Let's do the answers now. Okay, so if you've not quite got you on a bit more time to work out some of those things, pause and then we'll give you the answers. So the answer to number one, my Nora is harmony. Number two. <laughs> that was very, uh, very calm. Amethyst pick was sympathetic. Anita Composes was number three, and that is Compassionate. Uh, Bin's Legs uh, was number four, and that was Blessing. And then Fun Griefs for number five was Suffering. Isn't that exceptional, the way that all those words relate to our passage for today? How... Fortuitous. Fortuitous is that? Yeah. Fortuitous, very fortuitous. Yes, you would yeah. think it was planned. You would. Right, sword drill time. Sheath your swords. Wait. This week we're going to continue looking in 1 Peter. So obviously you're looking for 1 Peter, chapter 3. Draw your swords. 1 Peter. Chat. <laughs> Draw your sword. <laughs> Can't take a minute off. I'm going to pretend you're going to make it feel like... 1 Peter, chapter 3, verse 8. 
Walk you to chapter three, verse eight. Charles. Done. Yes. That was a draw. Yeah, you might have you dug off it. <laughs> he had to turn the page over. Oh, he's such a cheat. <laughs> you can... oh, sorry. I'm where the pathfinders get it from. Oh, none of those pathfinders cheat. They're fantastic people. I'm going to read verses eight to seventeen. So one Peter, chapter three, beginning at verse eight. Finally, all of you, live in harmony with one another. Be sympathetic. Love as brothers. Be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult, but with blessing, because to this you were called, so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from deceitful speech. He must turn from evil and do good. He must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you for the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against you uh, against your good behaviour in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. It is better if it is God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. Cool. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you so much for your uh, the advice that you give us through uh, this letter of 1 Peter. Thank you for all the people around us in St John's who are helping us and supporting us to um, learn what's in there, to understand what's in there and to use it to help us live lives that you would have us live. We pray that um, by your Holy Spirit you would help us now to understand your word and to put it into practice. Amen. Amen. So, question one is, what do the good things in verses 8 to 11 mean and what do they look like? Uh, again, it's that time where you can pause and chat to your uh, the people around you you might, you might be on your own, you might just be thinking about it. Um, what are the good things in verses 8 to 11? And what do they look like? So one of the good things um, is one of the words in the anagram. The first one is about living in yeah. harmony, isn't it? Yeah. What does it mean in music? Um, I, <laughs> I'll just say, I don't know what it is to sing in harmony. I'll try my hardest. But I know. I think I know what it means. I mean, compliment one another, isn't it? Mm. And there's more people, more than one person, and they, um, yeah, they sound good when they're singing the same thing, yeah. or maybe singing different things. But they, as you say, they complement each other. Yeah. <coughs> so what yeah. what might that look like in practice? I think it's working together, isn't it? Working together as a team. Um, supporting one another, encouraging one another, mm. not putting each other down, making sure that everybody has that equal chance or um, if somebody, yeah, struggling we help them. Yeah, I've just had a thought about the song thing. When you, when you're singing in harmony with someone, you're not singing the same, you're not necessarily singing the same thing. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. Um, so living in harmony with one another doesn't mean everything's boring and you're not you you you're all you're all saying the same things and you're all agreeing all the time. Actually, living in harmony can be you disagree in harmony as well, and you do different things in harmony, and you yeah. your gifts complement the other people yeah. that you're with. Yeah. Um, especially in the church, you could you could see that actually. I, I think. You can, you can see that in different people being different, having different gifts and skills, but working together. And not necessarily agreeing all the time either. Yeah. That's cool. Definitely. Next one, be sympathetic. It's interesting that when in, in school, when I talk about sympathy and empathy, I said we can all be sympathetic because you can think about how it must be to be the other person who's having a bad time of it. 
but you don't necessarily understand, but you're being kind to them. Yeah. Whereas empathy is you know how they feel. You've been through the thing yourself. You can identify with them. I don't think to, I don't think to be empathetic you have necessarily been through it, but you can understand those feelings. Yeah. And you can put yourself in that person's shoes and, and know how they might feel. Whereas I think to be sympathetic, you can feel sorry for somebody and you can be a bit like, oh, don't worry, it'll be all right, there, there, sort of thing. Yeah. Um, quite easily. So, yeah, it's very easy to be sympathetic. It's a lot harder to be empathetic. Yeah. I think. So, is sympathy mo- sympathet- being sympathetic, is that more than kindness? I think so, because if you're sympathetic, you might want to try and help. As well, even if you don't understand, you might try and help. Yeah. Um, yeah. What is it? Oh, I was just saying, I love lovers' brothers. <laughs> you might not necessarily want to love as your brother, <laughs> or you love your brother if you fight all the time or something like that. But <laughs> um, I think even if you do fight with your brother or sister or or whoever, actually, I think if you're honest about it, you would also do anything for them. Um, mm. And I think that's probably what it's getting at, isn't it? Yeah. Actually, it's being there for one another, and uh, being willing to do anything. It's that it's that unconditional love. Actually, there's there's nothing that your brother or sister could do that would that you completely disown them. Maybe that phrase that. covers a lot, doesn't it? Mm. It covers a lot about forgiveness as well. I think. In, yeah. In the in that relationship, be compassionate, humble. Do not repay evil with evil. Or insult with insult, but with blessing. It's so hard, isn't it, when somebody does something horrible, to not want to get revenge almost sometimes, and to repay that evil with evil. It's really hard to sort of turn the other cheek mm. and give a blessing. You know, to be someone does something to you, to turn around and do something nice back. Gosh, that's really difficult. Yeah. Although it's quite interesting um, that it reminds me of, uh, I don't know if it was a repeat or what, but it, uh, it was Alicia Dixon on uh, that Piers Morgan programme, that This Is Your uh, Life yeah, thing. It was a repeat one, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yesterday, she said she had a really bad time when she found out her husband was uh, cheating on her. And it struck me what she said. She didn't say that she was a Christian or anything, but um, she'd had bad things happen to her. And she said that her she knew that she would um she decided to remain calm um when she was talking to her husband about it she said she decided to be calm and talk about the facts and not be angry and not kick off and stuff like that and that actually that made me think about some of these in- instructions some of this guidance in one peter um she had had a bad thing happen to her and she she didn't she didn't respond with blessing as such but she it was interesting that she said that she was going to be self-controlled she was going to be calm the best thing in that situation for her was to take a deep breath and control herself mm. um whereas so many people instinctively go right someone's insulted me what am i going to do insult yeah. back yeah because like, a lot of the advice in one peter is it i mean peter uh jesus the holy spirit knows that, that this advice is coming to people who are human, who are sinful, who yeah. are um, uh, intrinsically I- inside. We we want to do that. We want to do the bad stuff, don't mm. we? If someone comes up to you and says, yes. oh, you, you're this, this and this, your parking was rubbish then, your driving was rubbish, and you've got a funny face, you want to go, yeah. what? Yeah. <laughs> well, your face is like this, and your driving was rubbish, and look at your parking. Yeah. You know, you want to come back with... The, 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 yeah. You want to come back with that negativity, don't you? Yeah. Is it not you? Not you in particular? No. Do you have a beautiful one. face and your driving is one. wonderful? I think I'm always too scared to do that. <laughs> no one would ever. No one would ever say that. I always walk away going, "Oh, I should have said that." I'm and too scared to. to yeah, too scared to actually respond and give a comeback, and then I walk away and kind of get really annoyed with this. I should have said that and sort of replay it in my head, and which is a, also not necessarily a difficult thing to do. Um, go, oh, I should have said that to them. Why didn't I say that? And just, well, actually, it's probably good that I didn't. <laughs> I've just walked away. Even yes. though I was walking away because I was scared, not because I necessarily wanted to be a blessing. But, yeah. um, but the, other, yeah. the other thing that springs to mind at the moment 
in terms of repaying evil with evil, not repaying evil with evil, not repaying insult with insult, but with blessing, is um, some of the hashtag Black Lives Matter mm. stuff that we've been seeing on TV recently. Strikes me as a lot of people are, there's a lot of videos out there and a lot of stuff on, on social media and a lot of stuff we're seeing on the TV that is actually brilliant. It's actually a load of black people coming out there on the, on the videos and showing kindness to people yeah. when there's been such horrible racism and horrible um, actions in the news. Yeah. Um, and that's another thing that, that, that comes into my mind. And it's interesting. Just, I just, you should think about this. Um, think about what it is. When you're being nasty to someone, when you're in a, in a rage and, and insulting someone for whatever reason, Think about what it's like when someone doesn't do that same thing to you. Think about what it's like when someone actually is kind to you and calm. And actually, you're like, oh, I, hold on, you know, the, the, yeah. there's there's something good in this this advice here. It's yeah. not just, um, you know, they're not just words. A feeling that you can imagine when you're you're being angry. Um, to someone and that, that person is just calm and, and, and trying to be kind to you or trying to do something um, it works and it points to what we were called for um, because Christians are all about receiving blessing from God yeah. receiving blessing in Jesus uh, and giving out that blessing that's yeah. what it says in terms of the reason in verses 9 and 10 yeah. uh, last one he must turn from evil and do good. This is verse 11. He must seek peace and pursue it. Actually, that's covered in our chat yeah, as well just now, isn't it? Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Um, and again, in verse 12, where it says, For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayer. Um, it's interesting, isn't it, that a lot, of, a lot of what we do as Christians is to mirror what God's up to. Find out what God's up to and join in. Yeah. Question two, uh, what is the theme that we see again in verses 13, 14 and 17? It's quite a, uh, a question where you can just look through the verses, look through the, the, the previous chapters of 1 Peter to find out. What is the theme that we see again in verses 13, 14 and 17? Have a pause, have a think and then come back. Welcome back. <laughs> I hate that bit. It's really weird. You better have paused then. Oh, that looks stupid. Um, <laughs> I guess the theme is that one that we, if you go right back to when we started on Peter, that theme of suffering and then glory. Yep. Um, I'm trying to, sorry, I've lost the list. My Bible's too small. <laughs> um, but even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. So, verse 14. You know, that's suffering and then blessing. And then verse 17, um, it is better if it is God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we, so we might suffer now, but actually, ultimately, there will be that blessing. Later. Yeah. Um, and also, the suffering um, theme in the other chapters is important too so the letter was written to Christians who were suffering um, and in terms of when we look at things like the the royal priesthood uh, living stone and the chosen people from uh, chapter 2 think about how encouraging that is for people who are suffering and then actually how encouraging this advice is as well again going back are we doing 18 today no. not doing 18 today but have a little sneaky peek at 18 because it says that it's better to suffer for doing good than doing for doing evil. Just like it said in the workplace two weeks ago, when we were talking about work and, and slaves and masters. Um, the reason is, for Christ died for sins once and for all. The reason is because of Jesus. Yeah. And so all of this is to point people to Jesus. Yeah. So we're seeing that theme of suffering again. Got all those good things. And then the last question, question three. In verse 15, 
it says to always be prepared to give an answer. Um, it, the full verse is, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. Do this with gentleness and respect. First part of the question is, how would you speak about the hope that you have in Jesus? And that's one of these things where actually it'd be really good to um, stop, pause the video and really think, yep. honestly, you might not have to write it down, depends on whatever you want to do. Um, honestly, reflect on how would you speak about the hope that you have in Jesus? What does Jesus mean to you? Maybe put it in a sentence. Think about it, write it in a sentence, or yeah. or just or tell somebody. Tell somebody if you can find somebody um, where you are. Yeah. And that is really important. So I'll pause and have a think. Really important because yeah. if you can't tell someone about what you believe, if you can't some tell somebody, express to somebody um, what Jesus means to you, then I think I would struggle to put it in a sentence. I think that's the thing. Okay, I would. I just end up waffling on, <laughs> which could be a good thing, in some ways, because um, I would want to say sort of say, well, the hope I have in Jesus would. Because Jesus died for me, he gave up everything for me. And I want to uh, repay that in some way. Not like that, it's possible for me to repay that, but I want to show I'm thankful. Gratitude. Yeah, show I'm thankful for that by living my life in a way that pleases God. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think Peter gives the answers, doesn't he? As, as you say, verse 18 gives the answer. It's a shame it's not really in today's passage. Um, but, you know, Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous to bring you to God. So it's because of Jesus that I'm now able to come to God and be forgiven. Um, and that's the hope that I've got, isn't it? It's that yeah. forgiveness and then being with God in heaven. Yeah. I think for me, I I would add in there as well that... Uh, if someone asks me about the hope that I have in Jesus, you know, you're a Christian, aren't you? What is that about? Actually, something that I am um, really excited about is actually that when I hear from God in the Bible, I still do test. Um, I, I still do test what I read. I still do think about what I read. I don't just I don't just blindly accept what's in the Bible. I think about it. I read around it. I work it out. And it turns out that one, uh, in addition to what you said, for, for me as well, it's amazing to see how the Bible um, rings true in all situations. So um, yeah. historically, um, in terms of facts of history, uh, all about Jesus and what happened, um, all the, um, the writings to the churches and things like that, they ring true, and they also ring true inside me as well. So when, when I um, read the, you know, bits of, of one Peter, it is God speaking to me, yeah. um, and the hope that I have, um, as you said, is in trusting in Jesus and His His death for me, to yeah. to uh, forgive me of my sins, to yeah. save me from hell, massively important, and then for the future as well. Yeah. in terms of hope and it's not hope like oh I really I really hope it'll all be okay it's actually hoping for um, God's certain promises to, to yeah. come true like you said about heaven and eternal life yeah. sometimes difficult things to, yeah. to think about then it talks about the reason doesn't it the reason that you have that hope I think one of the reasons that I would have as well is looking back through my life and seeing how God has worked mm. as well and how I felt good at how I've experienced God in my life through the prayers that he's answered and the way he's worked in different situations and, and things like that. So times that have been quite rubbish, I can now look back and think, oh, okay. So that that led to that, so that's good. <laughs> so you can kind of look back. Hindsight's great, isn't it? You don't know why something's happening when you're going through it, and it's maybe not until years later, but you can look back and 
see and actually that leads to the reason why we have the hope as well isn't it because we've seen God at work yeah God's faithfulness yeah cool yeah um, again don't worry if your answers to that question don't sort of precisely mm-hmm. match ours um, everybody's like Nicola yeah. said we've got um, each of us has got our own story yeah and everybody's story is going to be different so your experiences of God and the reasons that you might have might be completely different and that's fine you know that's good um, as long as you are confident in your answers and you can give an answer if somebody asks you the question cool. I think that's what matters and that leads on beautifully to our last put the last part of the this question which is when people have asked you to talk about what you believe in your life think about what questions they might have asked think about what they might have said to you and how they've said it. So when people have asked you to talk about what you believe, what questions have they asked? What kind and, of things yeah. have they said? And it might be that you, nobody has asked you yet. Hmm. You know, and that's, you know, I don't often get people asking me, to be honest. Um, but yeah, and that's how you see not to think about what questions people might ask in the future. Yep. Yeah. We were going to um, talk about this in Pathfinders just before lockdown. We were going to ask you for um, a load of questions, ask you to put them in boxes, well, put them in a box, <laughs> and then we were going to get the bits of paper out of the box and we were going to plan sessions to help you address those questions that people might have asked you. Or you might just think people might ask you a question. You might be a bit scared. Yeah. You might be a bit nervous about people asking you a question because you might have seen it on TV or something, people having a pop at, at Christians. Yeah. Um, we want you to share them, share those questions on WhatsApp, um, and we can start to plan some sessions for after lockdown on that, like we were going to. Yeah. Or maybe not even sessions, it might just be little little snippets at the end of a session where we address one of the questions yeah. and say how, how we would answer them. Yeah. Or maybe we get Aid or, or Ben or Kat in to grill them yeah. uh, on what they would say to people. Yeah. Uh, who asked them those questions. I think we want to do those face-to-face with you, though, mm. so that you can then come back and say, actually, that doesn't really answer the question. I wanted this. Um, so you can come back at us and sort of with a backup question or a second question if needs be. Yeah. Um, and, of course, yeah. these questions, you might have been brought up in the church and you might have never had the confidence to ask certain questions yourself. Yeah. So these questions might be about that. Yeah. But... It's really important because verse 15 starts with, but in your heart set apart Christ as Lord. And that's what, at the heart of what being a Christian is, is Jesus being the ruler over your life, Jesus being in charge of, of, of you. Yeah. And so when you're doing that, it's really important to think things through. And in Pathfinders, you know, we always want you to think things through for yourself as well. We don't want to, we'll never force you to believe something. And we never uh, tell you, um, that you, you have to think a certain way. We yeah. want you to be thinking it through yourself. Yeah. So, let's finish. Um, but in your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience, so that those who speak maliciously against your good behaviour in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. Yeah. So when you're praying this week, pray that God would help you to uh, find the answers if you haven't got them already. Um, have the confidence to ask the questions if you want to ask the questions. Um, and please do come back in the WhatsApp group with your questions so that we can start planning for f- the future. Cool. Cool. Are you going to pray for us? Yeah. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you don't call us to be robots you don't call us to be uh, totally perfect all the time but we do thank you for the the insight that we've had today uh, into the the way things could be if we all um, listen to, to your word and obeyed your word more and we pray that all those things that um, you might change in us we pray that all those things would come together to help m- more people hear about Jesus and respond to him Uh, especially when it comes to our answers. 
we pray that you would help us in finding those answers um, and we pray that you would bless us through the church as we uh, explore the answers together and the questions together we pray for great weeks we pray that we would have great weeks and uh, that we would live for you during these weeks um, we pray that we would know you more and love you more and love those around us more too amen amen take care have a good week everyone and see you soon take care bye